Welcome, Emoji 2 TV. I'm Coach Denzi, and today we have our Coach's Corner. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we're here with uh, Coach Christian. Coach Christian, um, are you all settled in right now in, in Loudonville? Yeah, well, you know, I'm settled in with our team, and we're making great progress every single day. Um, you know, as a coach, as a family man, that's where everything really starts, right? It starts with your yeah. team, and they're, they're a huge extension of your family, and, <laughs> and uh, I love the start that we're off to the first couple months here. Yeah. Now I got. I'm gonna start out with a little, uh, a little rumor mill type of thing here. Um, now John Thompson the third. He, you know, he got. You know, he parted ways with Georgetown. And I read somewhere that um, if they're looking for a young coach, you'll be the guy to go for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, any truth to that? Well, you know, I mean, you know, the Thompson family and what they've been able to do for college basketball, especially black head coaches. You just have so much respect for them. You know, when when you're growing up in this game and you're able to watch, you know, John Thompson, um, you know, what he was able to do in terms of, of just moving the game along. I mean, he's a pioneer of the game. So anyone in his family that says something says something that's um, that's that kind, you know, you take to heart, and it just means that you're on the path and you're working really hard to do things the right way, and um, you, know, you have a lot of admiration for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this type of coach we got here, people. I mean, getting mentioned the likes of Georgetown, that's incredible. Um, also, let me ask you, uh, what did what did, what attracted you to Siena? You know, um, what was the eventual? Yeah, what was that you know, uh, man. You know, when you're on the outside, you just know Siena's such a great basketball mm -hmm. job, and. You don't always know the ins and outs of it and, and why that would be, but you know it's a great basketball job. You know they have, you know, they play in a great arena, they have great support, and you know those things. But it's not until you get on the inside and you get a chance to meet some of the people. Um, you know, you meet some of those fans. Those, those, those fans have been packing the arena for 20, 20 years, and, <laughs> yes. and you know they have a love for seeing a basketball. And you know it's just an exciting place. Yeah. You know when you're a head coach, you're looking for a place where your brand mm -hmm. can match with a, with a college or university's brand in terms of how you tr take care of your players and in terms of how much success you're able to have yeah. as a basketball program, I, I felt like it was such a perfect perfect fit for me here at Siena, and I was excited about joining it. Yeah, man, I, I'm glad you're here, the way you're talking, the way, the way you do your thing. Now, uh, we had Sloan here earlier, he talked about you, and he's saying raving things about you as well, yeah. so uh, we're, I'm just excited to see what you what you bring to the capital region. Um, I've got another rumor real quick. Now, it was something, uh, just before you were hired here, I heard names like uh, Siena offered a job that Rick Pitino and, and gave it to lesser <laughs> people who like the a SUNY coach, but um, did you did, how how did you handle all that? Did you even hear that, or how did you how did you handle that? Well, you know, you know, you can't always you can't always trust everything that's out there. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing you can do, you know, when you offer opportunities, try to do the best you can with it. And mm -hmm. you know, this is a great job. This is a desirable job. So a lot of people should want this job. Yeah. And you know, my job now that I have an opportunity to do it is just do the best job that I can with it to try to take it to another level. Try <laughs> to do do that every single day and do it with great passion and enthusiasm. And you, know, you can't really look into the past. You know, right, Carl Malone right. once said, you know, when he was out talking about going to the Dream Team, he once said, you could have called me last, I was still going. And, <laughs> right. and the reality of it is, when there's a great opportunity in front of you, you should, take the, you should make the most of it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how they got to your name, they got there, and now it's my job to do a great job with it. That's right, that's right. Um, now, you at one, year, at one year assistant coaching spots, um, now you were in charge of certain areas like Texas and uh, D.C. and Virginia. Um, I think you were at uh, Women Mary by that time, and you were at VC too, VCU as well, and Emory and Henry. But um, do you still have those connections at those powerhouse states? Do you still yeah, have those connections? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that you just try to do as you're growing in this business, you're trying to continue to grow your contact list and, and your relationship list, really. And, mm -hmm. you know, just try to do it every step of the way. You know, the one great thing about basketball that I don't know if everyone realizes is, you know, when you start in this game young, you grow up with other people yeah, that are moving yeah, up yeah, and moving yeah. in the right direction. Mm -hmm. and, and so that creates an, another layer. Um, that allows to really help you in recruiting. So, you know, one of the things we got to do here at Siena, we got to do a tremendous job recruiting the area. Mm -hmm. You know, New York State basketball is so good. You know, we started trying to do that with Sloan Seymour and Jalen Pickett. Let, let's take care of home base first. Yeah. We're always going to do a great job there on home base, making people excited about playing here at Siena and playing at Times Union. Mm -hmm. And then we'll branch into those other areas on a secondary level um, and try to steal a guy or two out of there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're seeing all the right things, Coach. Um, what, what, you know, uh, I was gonna say, what what is your um, your ideal 
um, recruit? Like, what do you look forward to? And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about overall. Like, what are you looking for in a recruit overall? Like, um, looking for a person to average 30 points? Or looking for a person to have a 3.75 GPA? Or looking for a guy to have a state championship underneath his belt? What are some of the things that you are looking for in a recruit? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and it can vary some. We always want guys that can win. Mm -hmm. You know, I think guys that understand the ability to win, that play great basketball programs, they get acclimated a little bit sooner, a little bit faster. And so that's always a big help, guys are able to win. Essentially, we're looking for guys who are longer than their body. So if you're 6'6", six, six, we want a guy who's plus three. That means 6'9", mm -hmm. reach um, within his length. And that's a big posit positive part for us defensively. That's going to allow us to be one of the best defensive teams if we have guys who are a little bit bigger than their, than their listed height. So we're looking for those, number one. We're looking for guys that have great intangibles. Uh, mm -hmm. Humility is huge for us. Um, you know, when you meet a humble person, you know, what they're able to do when they make a mistake in terms of being able to laugh at their mistake and learn from their mistake is huge. Every one of the guys on our team right now, they're going to get better as the season goes on if they have a great level of humility. If they're able to get better every single day by learning from their mistakes, by the end of their careers, they're going to be able to put together a great career mm -hmm. because they've been able to learn from those mistakes. So, you know, we're looking for guys with a great level of humbleness and that have the ability to grow and learn because everyone is going to be a great high school player. Our job is to find the best college players. And so we're looking for some tangible qualities with length and shooting and all those things. And the tangible qualities are easier for people to see. Mm. But we're really looking for the guys with the right kind of intangibles. You know, when you're at a job like Siena, you want to have a chance to play deep into the NCAA tournament. That's why I'm here. That's why these guys choose here. Therefore, you must be able to handle all that comes with that. And so mm -hmm. I would say you have to have broader shoulders <laughs> to be able to put on more weight. Yeah. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a lot of different things. But those are, those are some uh, particular touch points I think are pretty important. Now, you said something very important there, and I picked up on when I was doing the research on you, um, getting better. You know, as you you know, as you as, as they come in contact with you, and I read somewhere where you had multiple players um, make the NEC uh, all yep. tournament, all yep. team list, all conference list, and all that stuff. Is that something that you really pride yourself on developing um, yeah. individuals? Oh, huge! You know, yeah. we you know you put together a staff that's built on development. It, it, it's such a thing now. Everyone kind of uses the buzzword, but then. You go out on the road in the fall and they'll have their entire staffs out on the road. And, mm. you know, we don't do that. You know, mm. we're very individually driven. We want to really develop these guys. And, and development is, comes on a lot of different levels now. Mm. You know, development is getting on the floor and doing some things. You know, I'm a 36-year-old head coach, so I'm able to get out there and our staff's really youthful. We can get out there and sweat and move around with mm. our guys. Mm. That's, that's, well, that's one area of development. But I think the mental development and helping guys understand their maturity mm. becomes really important. And to be, help someone become more mature, you have to be really honest with them about what you need from them. Right. And, and so we really try to do a great great job on both levels and so when we play our development program the program itself isn't just about the physical it's about growing them mentally and helping them understand where they can really impact this game and really impact the, the lives of those around them right right um, but you're just saying that right there I mean I, I don't see why any parent will wouldn't want their <laughs> child to be with you you know I mean <laughs> yeah I mean you're saying a whole, a whole bunch right there um also um, at VCU it was called Havoc yep. at Mount uh, Mary's. It was called Mayhem, yep. uh, Mount Mayhem. Um, now I was. I read somewhere that you know you were, you know you coached at a place where Amy Henry. I'm, I'm thinking yep. uh, where you average 104 points. Absolutely. So I, I got a question. Um, how would you describe your style? Oh well, our I mean, with all that put together, you know. Yeah, what I mean? you know, you know, I've been fortunate to work with some terrific head coaches, Bob Johnson, Emory, and Henry. You know, we're at a place lo locally locale there where we weren't getting six foot seven, six foot eight giants. Mm -hmm. So we were getting a lot of guys that were six foot four, six foot five. And so we said, let's come up with a creative style that's going to allow us an opportunity to win every single night. And so we came up, we called it the Emory and Henry running attack. And, mm -hmm. you know, we would sub players, we'd sub by units every 35 seconds. And we're really specific offensively with what we were doing for each, each group that was going onto the floor. So it was just a brain that gave us an opportunity to, to win, right? right? I mean, right, the creativity right. comes from necessity. And we, were, we, we had to figure out a way to do that. And so so we, you know, we played really up-tempo there. We pressed and trapped. And then I went from there to work for Pat Flannery at Bucknell, who was just a tremendous organizer. You know, he was mid-major coach of the year, um, mid-major coach of the year at some point. And he's just a tremendous organizer and understands what he needs to do to help his teams win. From there, Tony Shaver, who's done a great job at William & Mary and building that program up, mm -hmm. which historically hasn't been great. He's been unbelievable. And there we ran like Princeton and matchup zone. Mm -hmm. And so I got a little taste of that. Yeah. And then anytime you get a chance to go then and work for Shaka Smart, <laughs> one right. of the most passionate people um, in the game mm -hmm. and passionate about imp improving guys' lives, 
you know, so what I wanted to do is, you know, I have to put this stuff in, into the brand that I believe in. Right. And so we took a lot of things from each one of those programs, things that we really liked. But what it did for me is it allowed me to be able to look at our teams differently, uh, to look at our teams with the idea of what does each person do well? And whatever style we need to play, I have an idea of how to, how to mold our teams into those different things. And right. that's why we've been able to be successful, not because we've done one thing really well, but we've had great versatility and great understanding of what we need to do with each person on our roster. That's amazing. Now, as far as your style, are you a type of guy that like to get up in the, your player's face or the type of guy that like to get up in the referee's face? Or are you just calm, collective at all times? Like what type what type of demeanor do you yeah. decorum do you have on the bench? You know, I would say I'm tenacious in practice. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that we're trying to build about it is about preparation. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, if you wake up on Sunday and you prepare your week, you're gonna you're, you have a better chance of having a successful week. That's what successful people do, right? They prepare. That's right. They when you have a chance to prepare, then you know where you're gonna be really successful at, but you also know the potential pitfalls you might have. Mm -hmm. and, right. and so everything is about our ability to prep to, to prepare. And you know, so in practice, I'm on these guys. You know, I'm on mm -hmm. them, I'm coaching them hard, I'm being being honest with them, really honest with them, and making sure they're seeing the film of where we need to improve mm -hmm. at. So we've got to be great at preparation. But when we get in the game, you know, I'm a firm believer as a guy who played the game and you know played well sometimes and played poorly others. <laughs> you know, you either coach how you want it to be coached right. or you coach how you were coached. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to play for someone who's really insanely passionate about our, our performance during the game, but also insanely passionate about our performance in practice. And right. so when we're in the game, you know, I, you know, you guys might make a mistake. I'm gonna ride them out. Yeah. I'm gonna trust them mm -hmm. because I know that growth comes from learning from those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a guy might miss two or three shots in a row, and people might might start to groan a little bit. But trust me, a year from now, two years from now, mm -hmm. they're gonna be able to recover from that right. and really gonna be able to be a great player. Right. Confidence comes from the ability to make mistakes and knowing that you can recover. Right. So we've got to make that rubber band a little bit tighter with your ability to recover. You know, we start that process every single day. And so, when they come into games, I want to be laid back with them in the yeah, games right. and. and Intense in the timeouts, but you know while they're on the floor, I'm going to be their biggest cheerleader, trying to give a ton of confidence. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. I, uh, how you said that. Um, let me see. All right, now by winning the uh, the Ben uh, Job Award, I mean it's a award for the top, uh, you know, um, black uh, or minority uh, um, coach in Division One. What would you assess that that award? At? I mean, what is that one of your your proudest ones yeah, in you know, basketball or you know, something it's, else? It's special because you know as you learn about, about about Coach Ben Job, you you understood some of the challenges that he had at, at, that he had as a coach, mm -hmm. and, and so it's one of those more special ones because you know it, I went in and had to do some research on it. I was like, man, like this guy was really fasting. He's really a pioneer of the game, and mm -hmm. you know a lot of times there are certain pioneers that just get so much more publicity, mm -hmm. but you have to. But there are so many others who are working every day, so I can sit here, so the next guy yeah. can sit in that chair, and wow. and just having a, so much respect for those who came before me, and you know that's why when I talk about like Coach Thompson or, or Coach Ben Job, when I talk mm -hmm. about those guys or Nolan Richardson, you know they're in a category of by, their, by themselves because what they've been able to do to change the culture of a game that I get a chance to experience every day here is just unimaginable. Right. And so it's one of those rewards that I just feel so humbled yeah. to even have my name on the same <laughs> placard as right. as Ben Job. Yeah. Now let me bring you back real quick. Um, you know. You, you talk about you know letting kids like try to find their way out of a tough situation. They might have been over three, might put their head down or whatever, um, but you still you know encourage them to get out of that funk some kind of way because your encouragement. Now, what do you say to a guy who might not play a much? He'd be an end of the bench, but not, how how do you keep him involved? Yeah, well, how do you everyone has a role that's so important and. My job is to make sure everybody understands that and, mm -hmm. and try to preach it to them every single day. And, yeah. you know, whether it's a, a giant role in practice or a giant role during the game, you know, the, the thing that's crazy about energy is that it is contagious. Yeah. And so one of the first lessons we actually had with our team was about energy and how we're all responsible for the energy that we bring to a room each, day, each and every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we can make our energy contagious, you know, right, and every person puts 10% more, 10% more energy, then it's going to be really hard for the opposing team to stay on with that energy, right? right. Right, right. And so we've got to win the energy battle every single day. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we're really working towards that. And I think the guys have a strong understanding of what's important for that. And, you know, so every guy on the roster has a role that's super important. Everybody everybody there, managers, mm -hmm. athletic director, you know, one of the things they, they've probably learned in the building with me is that I'm like, everyone has a role that's right. super important. Right. And I value it that way. And mm -hmm. that's why I've seen it as a great place because you have so many people that love and care about your program that they're able to jump onto that energy bus quickly and we're able to attack each day. Now, my second to last question, where do you see seeing in the next three years, four years? 
Yeah, well, I feel like our program's limitless. You know, mm -hmm. that's the word that I use. I mean, we have everything in place to be as dominant as we need to be, and we just got to keep adding the right kind of pieces and, and developing the right kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. and the reality of it is, is you can have really talented pieces, but if they don't have the right mindset, then you won't be able to, to be at full capacity, and that's where we want to be at, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, where we can be at, you know, I can't put a point on a map on it because I don't like, I don't believe in putting ceilings <laughs> on, on success, and I don't right. believe in putting ceilings on people. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about us as a staff and, our, and everyone in our program just buying into the things we We've got to do every single day. You know, who knows where we can be at? But I do, I do believe, believe we can be limitless here. Okay. And, you know, we've got to try to attack that every day. Mm -hmm. Now, um, two, I'm sorry, I said the last question, but two more. Mm -hmm. um, the athletic director, how is he? And let's talk a little bit more about Sloan Seymour and what he, yeah. what, and what does he, what do you see his, um, his, you know, his capabilities of yeah. providing for your, for your program this year? Yeah, well, John is tremendous, our athletic director just has great vision and understanding of the MAC and college basketball and what we need to do here at Siena to be successful. You know, he's just a great resource for me to be able to go up to and talk to each day. I mean, you know, he's understanding things that have worked, things that haven't worked in the past. He's just a real, real true visionary. And I don't know if he always gets the credit he deserves for where we've been able to move the program mm -hmm. over the last, you know, 20 years that he's been here. And, and uh, you know, I'm excited to work for him. He's got a great reputation within college basketball for what he's been able to do here at Siena. And, and uh, you know, my job is try to get him to that NCAA tournament one more time. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we're working tirelessly every day mm -hmm. to right. be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we talk about Sloan Seymour, you know, at that position, I believe no one's made less than 75 threes at that position for me in the last um, in the last uh, six years. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was he's extremely extremely important for us recruiting. I mean, we want to space the floor out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're a team that's going to shoot 25 plus threes every single night. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. Um, and he's a guy that's obviously capable of doing that. And that does a couple things, you know. Uh, you know, when you have a team that's capable of taking that many outside shots and making, you know, eight to ten somewhere in that area, it just puts so much pressure on the on the on the opposing defense. And you got to space you out. And Sloan Seymour is a guy that can do that. And highly. A highly um, respected shooter, um, and we're working on other parts of his game to make him really even more unguardable. But he's been un he's been unbelievable. Uh, his ability to understand the game, his understanding of what we need him to do better within our offense, and his coachability has been through the roof. So he's been a guy that's been been really fun to coach. Mm -hmm. You know, we hit it off the first time I made a call to him. We really hit it off. I think he understood the style of play. Mm -hmm. he, under he understood what we we're trying to bring, and he's really up for the challenge of getting Sienna back to the top of the mat. Wow, awesome! Last question, family. Um, you were. You were Getting it through fiance, I think you yep. might have got married or yep. something during yep. time. So tell, tell us about that. And uh, does she like the area or is she back home? I mean, yeah. how's that whole thing going? Yeah, my, my wife is, is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we accepted a job three days before uh, our wedding. Wow. Right? wow. And, and she still made it down the aisle and she still said yes. And, mm -hmm. um, but she understands that. I mean, she's a coach's wife and, and a coach's wife's existence is, is largely determined on, on, on when you move and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And she's unbelievable. Uh, just her, her love and support and her understanding of, of what we need to do. And, you know, she's just such a great teammate. She's always been bought in from the day that I met her. And, um, so I'm just really fortunate to have a great person beside me each and every day that I can come home, come home and celebrate with or mm -hmm. come home and, and vent to, mm -hmm. and, and she's just super supportive. And she loves the Capital Region. Uh, she's, oh, she's, nice. she's meeting a ton of friends here, and, and um, she's just tremendous. She's loved this area from day one. And, you know, we were both really excited for an opportunity to move up here. Oh, right. I appreciate your time. Appreciate Coach, you, thank Coach, you so much. Christian. Hope we can continue this um, throughout the season and uh, get to some of my, my fans a, a little bit of insight on you and what, you, what you're going to bring. I'd love to do it. Thank you so much for thank having you. us. Thank you. Emoji2TV, signing out.